Uh, hey guys, Michael Linares here. You guys are sitting in on a uh, live uh, VIP Inner Circle tutoring where you, the student, can ask any question you want live on Ustream, my Ustream channel. Now, uh, it is a uh, fee of $39 a month, but um, again, we meet weekly on every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, Western California Standard Time. Ask any question. So, just like a, a student right here, Albertine has asked a question about physical assessment. So we're going to be answering how to chart a good, clean, simple physical assessment. So let's do this. Albertine, this one's for you here. So charting, 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 charting. Physical assessment. Let me get my note here. Alright. So we're going to be talking about how to do a clutter-free, concise, to the point um, charting in terms of nursing process type of charting. Something that your clinical instructor wants to see. So again guys, we want to make sure that we fall in the guidelines of DAR, D-A-R, Data Action Response. And also, well not give too much data in terms of good findings, we're going to want to give the raw, ugly data, okay? Because the ugly data, we can say that 99% of everything in the patient's body is good. And we don't want to chart all that stuff on a narrative saying that, you know, narratively, the eyes look good. Narratively, the grips are good. Narratively, everything is so good. We want to specifically focus on the bad, okay? So, Let's talk about a uh, chest pain patient, okay? We can also chart on a diabetes ulcer patient. Uh, we can chart on a, let's say, electrolyte imbalance patient, someone who has hypokalemia. Probably going to find a lot of cramps. You can even do a uh, hypernatremic patient. Probably a lot of fluid retention because they have too much uh, sodium. So what are you going to find with fluid retention? You're going to find fluid overload. You're going to find... Um, bounding pulses, JVD, you might even find a little bit of edema depending on how long they've had this fluid volume overload or this, uh, in, in this case, a hypernatremic patient. Not necessarily fluid volume overload, but that is one of the, um, the later findings because all that sodium, all that salt, brings that water in. Then you're going to have intravascular swelling, which leads to what? Yes, that's right. Higher blood pressure. Good job, Carl. Higher blood pressure. Great. All right. So, in terms of Albertine's question, how do you chart on a chest pain patient? So, Albertine, here we go. You're going to want to start off with your narrative. This is a narrative charting. You're going to want to start off with, um, why am I putting that? <laughs> You're going to start off with level of consciousness, LOC. With that, you're going to put the vital signs. This gives a snapshot of how your patient is doing both neurologically and their entire vital signs. Remember guys, the vital signs are just a snapshot of your patient's cardiovascular system, their oxygen exchange, their respiratory rate, how well they're breathing, and a uh, temperature, which just shows that does a patient Fever? Are we thinking infection? Or what's wrong with the patient? Basically a snapshot of total what's going on. So LOC, we usually chart it by saying alert and orientated times three, times four, okay? Alert and orientated times four. So Albertine, your patient's complaining of chest pain. That's good, he's talking. You can ask him his name. You can ask him four questions. His name, uh, his birthday, uh, today's date or something relevant, today's um, uh, president, today's month, or today's, this month, <laughs> and also a location. Where is he at? Just to make sure that the patient is all with it. Because I've had dementia patients who don't know their name, don't know where they're at, don't even know how to verbalize anything, but 
a lot of the patients who, um, who have dementia usually say one word repetitiously. And one of the words that this patient in particular that I was caring for in the emergency room was saying pain, 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 over and over again. So instead of me going in and saying, this patient has pain, I'm going to treat the pain. I went into the patient's room, sir, what is your last name? Pain, pain. Sir, what's the date today? Pain, pain. Sir, do you know where you're at? You guys, I was not getting through to him. So that's why we start with LOC, level of consciousness. Patient, AO times four, if, he has, if he's responsive to four, four questions. And if the patient only knows, if the patient's comatose, we put AO times zero. Patient alert and orientated times zero. I'm sorry, if he's not <laughs> comatose. If the patient's alert and uh, awake, that, but can't respond to anything, like Mr. Payne, then he knows zero. Alert and orientated times zero. He knows nothing. Okay? So he's not orientated. He's not, uh, doesn't know his name, doesn't know the date, doesn't know the location, doesn't know the situation. If the patient's totally comatose, then you put unresponsive and responsive to stimuli if you give him a sternal rub or painful stimuli. And the patient responds, okay? So hopefully that makes a little sense. But Albertine, I'm sorry for straying away from your question here. Let's go into it real quick. LOC, so the patient's AO times four, knows his name, knows the date, knows the location, knows the time, knows what's going on. Vital signs, vital signs are actually okay. We have our blood pressure, we have our pulse, we have our O2 saturation, we have our temperature, and we have a respiratory rate, okay? Always, 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 even if they're normal, you want to chart them because those are your vital signs. Those are the core, okay, Albertine? All right. Next, guys, you want to go into a focused assessment. So focus assessment. Now, I know in nursing school, it's very tough to anticipate what your nursing instructor wants. Because, I mean, from the beginning of nursing school, your, your clinical instructors are telling you, do a head-to-toe. Do a head-to-toe. Every single patient. Do a head-to-toe. 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 Toe-toe-toe. Toe-to-head. Head-to-toe. Right? And you don't understand that, you know, a head-to-toe assessment doesn't really mean starting from head-to-toe. A head-to-toe assessment just means full-body assessment. Making sure that you're doing your data action response your nursing process, and you're specifically going on what the nurse wants you to basically be documenting. You've taken a look at the patient's entire body, head to toe. Not necessarily in that order. So this is the order they want. You do your focus assessment. Focused assessment first. So this is number one. What is a focus assessment, Albertine? Go ahead and type there. You can do it. <laughs> Have you stepped away from your computer? <laughs> there you are, okay. Focus assessment. Base. Okay, Albertine says focused assessment is an assessment that's focused on the patient's chief complaint. Great, good job. Big fancy words for what is the patient there in the hospital for? What are you gonna focus on first? In this case, we're focusing on chest pain. So, you go into your patient's room. He's talking to you. You take his vital signs. They're looking okay. He came in for chest pain. You want to ask the patient, what? What do you want to ask him about routine? That's right. Are you having pain right now? If he says no, no pain, that's awesome. You chart that. Focus assessment. Patient is complaining of 0 out of 10 pain. Now you don't have to go through the whole OPQRST that says no onset, <laughs> no onset, no, uh, nothing provoking, no quality. You just have to put no, okay? And then you do your cardiac assessment in terms of listening to your heart sounds. 
your um, atrial, pulmonic, um, tricuspid, or what they call herbs points. Then you listen to your apical or one.